ਫਰੀਦਾ ਬਾਰ ਪਰਾਇਆ ਬੈਸਣਾ ਸਾਈਂ ਮੁਝੇ ਨ ਦੇ ਜੇ ਤੂੰ ਏਵੇਂ ਰਖਸੀ ਜਿਉ ਸਰੀਰੋਂ ਲੈ ਬ੍ਰਦਰਸ ਐਂਡ ਸਿਸਟਰਸ ਟੁਡੇ ਐਸ ਵੀ ਆਰ ਟਾਕਿੰਗ ਇਨ ਕਸ਼ਮੀਰ ਵੈਲੀ 71 ਇਅਰਸ ਹੈਵ ਪੈਸਡ and during all these years the brave kashmiri brothers and sisters the way they fought the oppression the way they stood up for their basic civil liberties over 120000 people those who were killed in these 71 years the word on their lips was azadi 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 Pakistan American Society of New York deserves congratulations that they have made it a point that this day which is not only the day of betrayal or day of beginning of oppression and repression but also a reminder as freelance writer thinker controversial Milan Kundra once said the first step towards liquidation of a people is to destroy its books its culture its history then have somebody to write new books invent new culture create new history before long the people will forget that what they were and what they are the struggle of memory is against forgetting and remembering that what happened 71 years ago remembering that how brave kashmiris are even standing today dr fai gave a detailed account of these 71 years i had the honor to meet him in 1991 for the first time when we opened our office khalistan affairs center in national press building the fact of the matter is now their agencies they are planning that how 2019 parliamentary elections are to be won and how that hatred has to be spread from kashmir to kanyakumari and for that the easy target is name pakistan then bring isi in it and then say it is all foreigners those who are doing it and two examples before i talk about that how six have faced this betrayal what six have gone through in that so called largest democracy on this planet janab imran khan he took oath just two months ago on his invitation navjot sidhu who is a cabinet minister now in the indian occupied punjab cabinet of amrinder singh participated in the oath taking ceremony General Bajwa when he saw Navjot Sidhu he came embraced him and he said we are ready now the 2019 year is the 550th anniversary year of birth of Guru Nanak Sahib and General Bajwa said we will welcome six we will make 3 km corridor between Dera Baba Nanak and Kartarpur Sahib and for just in brief I may tell that kartarpur sahib has the same importance in the sikh mind sikh belief sikh history as is madina in islam and if i may say our makkah and madina place of guru nanak sahib's birth nankana sahib is in pakistan and where guru nanak sahib spent 18 years of his life and the city he founded was kartarpur karta is the creator city of the god where Hindus Muslims Sikhs all lived together for 18 years Guru Nanak himself worked in the field still that old well Pakistan Sikh Gurdwara Prabandhak Committee has preserved which was used for agriculture and such a historical place which is just 3 kilometers away from Dera Baba Nanak and Pakistan says okay most welcome we'll make a bridge come and what happened to navjot sidhu there shouldn't be any doubt that navjot sidhu is a hindutvi show boy no doubt about it in 2002 when narendra modi killed thousands of muslims in gujarat 
the only one who went in the next elections for his campaign was Navjot Sidhu. He fits into a typical Sikh as they want, a typical Muslim in the Hindu India as he ties a red thread round his wrist. He performs Havan. He claims that he also worships Shiva. So that kind of renta Sikh or renta Muslim suits them as they have people like Nakvis and others in the BJP. But in spite of his total loyalty, he was three times member of parliament on the BJP ticket from Amritsar parliamentary seat. But in spite of all that, that one embrace and his talking about Guru Nanak Sahib, that plays a corridor from Pakistan, was enough to club him as ISI agent, to club him as a Pakistani agent. And that tirade, not only against Navjot Sidhu, then they wrapped all 30 million Sikhs saying they are traitors. They, they are traitors. They are with Pakistan. So that is the first thing to know. We have listened here and most of you as you have, no, you are not only, you have, you not only have sympathy, but you have empathy. You have lived through all those years. So I need not dwell, dwell on the histo historical facts of the past. But the fact is that presently where we are standing, as, as was said that in the post 9-11 scenario, the word militant or freedom fighter disappeared, all became terrorists. It may be militant, it may be freedom fighter. But today I want to acknowledge first when we are remembering those hundreds of thousands of innocent Kashmiri brothers and sisters for their sacrifices, we shouldn't forget that who take to the arms to defend their rights. And I may quote one of the quotes of Guru Gobind Singh, 10th Guru, who fought against tyranny. He was a great scholar of Persian. And his one share in Persian is, Chunkaras hama hilte darguzast, halalast, burdan ba shamshire dast. And see at the preamble of UN Charter of Human Rights. In the preamble of UN Charter of Human Rights are these words, if a man is not to be compelled as a last resort to rebellion, his human rights must be protected by the rule of the law. When there is no rule of the law, when state terrorism takes that extent where as they are the custodians to defend their citizens, but what is happening in Kashmir, what happened in Punjab in the last particularly 34 years, most narratives, even Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, and so many reports unending, as it was mentioned that U United Nations Human Rights Council for the first time in 71 years have published a 49-page report just a couple of months ago telling what is happening in Kashmir. And immediately, what was the reaction of the Indian government? Not only ter terming that Jordanian prince as a Muslim, but now even when the ex-Chilean president, uh, the lady, she says the same thing. Now they are saying it is some nasty lobby which is doing anti-India thing. But one thing is very clear. When we say, Kuji baat to ultimately baat cheet se hogi, aap kis se baat karenge? Imran Khan took an initiative as there was UN General Assembly session here. Both the foreign ministers from India and Pakistan were to be here. He was the first one who wrote a letter, okay, let there be a meeting on the sidelines of UN and let we discuss everything. And what happened? Agreeing to that meeting within 24 hours, they, the foreign ministry, their spokesperson Ravish Kumar came up with the excuse. They said, oh, Pakistan Postal Department has issued 20 postal stamps, including one of the Varhani. And so, and three Indian soldiers were killed on the border. How the talks and the terrorism can go hand in hand? And the fact of the matter is, while they talked about those 20 stamps, which were issued two, three months even earlier while Imran Khan was campaigning, not only Varhan Wani's stamp was there, they didn't mention one stamp which was from Chitti Singhpura village of district Anantnag in Kashmir Valley 
of the sick orphan children sitting there who were made orphaned as President Bill Clinton when he visited Delhi on March 20, 2000, the day he landed on the Delhi airport, 35 innocent sick males, they were taken from their homes, made to stand in front of the Gurdwara wall and massacred in a El Capino gangster style. And who did it? Madeleine Albright, who was the Secretary of State under Clinton during the first term, after retirement, she wrote a book, Mighty and Almighty. And the foreword of that book is written by President Clinton. And still, you can read that, President Clinton said that when I was to visit India, 35 innocent Sikhs were killed by Hindu militants. And look at that time, the day that killing took place, the very next day Indian foreign ministry said, oh, lashkar e taiba sitting in Pakistan have done it, we saw through the mischief. The very next day, we planned a protest here in front of Indian consulate, and we saw that RSS, which, which is in power now directly, as Mohan Bhagwat, he is claiming that by 2022, everybody will be a Hindu, and as Subramaniam Swami says, the DNA of every Indian is Hindu. Now, they were countering that part, we knew, and what they did four or five days later? They picked up five innocent Kashmiri Muslim youth from Patribal, killed them, and they said, we have killed those lashkar e taiba militants, those who had killed 35 Sikhs. But later on, when their families found that they are their own sons, and investigation took place, and forensic experts came, and Everything happened and finally it was found that they tried to justify by picking and killing them so that it may be blamed on Kashmiri militants or on Pakistan. So the way Indian operations have, are taking place in Kashmir, remember Punjab was the first laboratory for them between 1978 and 1995. And during all these years, no international human rights group was allowed to visit there. During all this period, even the, there is a story and that has been recognized now even in Canada, Jaswan Singh Khalida, a human rights activist who investigated the whole thing. He went to the three cremation grounds in District Amritsar, one in Tarantaran, one in Amritsar, one in Patti. Now, they had cremated thousands of six youngsters. The military used to come, circle a village, all young boys between the ages of 14 to 34, 35 used to be taken away, and next day there used to be a news that 10 Sikh militants killed in a police encounter, the same thing which is happening in Kashmir. Now, Jaswan Singh Khalida, who was the chairperson of the human rights wing, he thought that as thousands of young men were disappearing. And he thought that how we can find out. Now in the matter of graves, we know the mass graves of Kashmir and what happened there. But as we cremate our dead, there was no way to find it out. And he along with one human rights activist, he was from Northeast, Ram Narayan Kumar, very honest person, he's no more, but he was like Justice Tar Kunde. He was the retired Chief Justice of Supreme Court of India, and he was the, really the father of human rights movement in India. Firstly, they published a report under Justice Tar Kunde, who are guilty in November 84 killings, as uh, just two weeks ago, Pennsylvania Assembly passed a resolution where they admitted that what happened in November 84 in Delhi and all over India, when over 30,000 Sikhs were killed, was a genocide and you may find the copies of those resolutions on your tables. We are working on it. California Assembly has recognized it. Now state of Connecticut even have started uh, commemorating that day. We will be gathering at the Connecticut uh, Assembly House in the first week of November uh, to participate there. But now Khalida, as I am now talking about Punjab, what happened in November 84, that was in rest of India, from Delhi to Kanyakumari. 
Mr. Khalida, he thought that whenever they say unidentified lavaras, lavaras lashe, so they get the wood from the municipal committee as is a practice everywhere. He went to the municipal committee, found the registers, and whoever brings those unidentified bodies, it is mentioned that which DSP or SP or SHO or inspector brought that. And on the basis of that, he did that research very quietly for a year or so. And he found out that between 92 and 94, 25,000 sick young boys were cremated in just these three cremation grounds of Punjab amongst just one district of Amritsar. And in Punjab, there are 20 districts. Uh, they're used now. There used to be 17 then. So now, just one thing, Khalida, who came to Canada in 1995, and we happened to share the dais in Dixie Gurdwara in uh, Toronto, as Vakil Saab mentioned about his visit uh, during the school days or student time, that what kind of Canadian society it was. And we were together. He, I spoke before him. And Khalida said in that congregation, he said that DGP Punjab, KP Gill, and look at that as my African brother mentioned, African-American, there is a very popular story which I often quote based on the proverb in Africa that a woodcutter came to a forest and he said that I'll cut all these trees and trees started laughing. They said, no, you, you can't destroy us. He said, look, and next day he came with a rod which, which was made of the same wood of that tree and started cutting one by one and emptied the whole forest. The moral is that enemy also always uses amongst those very people. It may be apartheid, it may be other things, even in America. When we talk about Malcolm X, he says there are house niggers and there are field niggers. How such class of people those who start enjoying slavery and they start as it used to be here in the morning if the owner is sick the slave will say oh are we sick today he becomes we His, there is no identity of that him there is no dearth of such people in Punjab Kashmir or other parts so Khalida said mentioned in Dixie Gurdwara Toronto he said DGP KP Gill who was honored as a super cop by all Indian media as they do with the killers. He said, the DGP says, you are talking about 25,000 unidentified bodies. If it becomes 25,001, what difference it will make? And after going back from Canada, within two months, he was picked up from his home and turned into an unidentified body. So when I talk about those, those who are struggling there, and I heard from his daughter who came to United States and speaking in a Gurdwara in Stockton, she said that my dad, though I was very little, eight or nine years old, I couldn't get the love of my father. But I have the satisfaction that my father gave identity, Pachan, to 25,000 people though he lost his own identity. So I think those very brave people, as Dr. Fai mentioned, it may be Sayyid Ali Shah Gilani, it may be Mirwais, Umar Farooq, Yaseen Malik, those who are standing on a stand, wherever they are. I had an opportunity to meet Mirwais, Umar Farooq uh, in Dr. Fai's office one time. I could see the gentleman talking logic. You can't see the Fironiyat or anything. But the Indian system which is bent upon destroying that very leadership and they did the same as Siddhar Kapoor Singh, one of the great six scholars once he said ke har insaan di kimate basharte ke o vikan lai tiyar hoye jis di kimat nahi hai una de siran di kimat rakhi jande when, when they have the price on the head those are, those are the ones, those who refuse to sell their conscience. Jagdi Jameer and great Saint Soldier Sikh of 20th century, son Jarnail Singh Khalsa Pindramwale, whose name, whose picture even still terrifies the Indian rulers, 
who ever has a t-shirt of his picture or a picture in their homes they come and charge them under sedition and his two quotes I'll say and which are very relevant for this gathering as well one uh, he used to talk in chaste Punjabi he said Je anakhnaal jone ta learna pavega very clear okay, if you want to live with dignity then you'll have to fight you can't just talk and mimic and get away and second was Sarirak maut nu main maut nahi manda zameer da mar jana shartiya maut hai so so i think we appreciate and we today should pay salute to those very brave souls those who stood against tyranny and even today when there is azadi azadi all over it may be students and how they have used pellet guns how they have used all kinds of things and the way you are all kashmiris and i agree and i in my i have a one hour live uh, tv talk show such or such on tv 84 and every other day i have a segment on kashmir their bravery and i say that thou we are known as a martial race brave people we fought for 10 15 years but eventually somewhere Indian system they have tried to break our will at least there for some time though the diaspora five million sick diaspora is standing against the oppression but salute to the Kashmiris that they have tried everything whatever they could but they couldn't take that word away from the fiza of Kashmir azadi 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 and and one thing as in the Indian context when we are talking about the sufferings and political aspirations of Kashmiris, Sikhs, Dalits, Dalit factor is very important and it will have to be understood that today when it comes to the number game we are talking about 1 billion 300 million people and their falsification tactic. Now just three four days ago the government of Jammu and Kashmir issued a circular to the educational department, schools and colleges that by Ramayana and Mahabharata, Hindu books for schools and colleges, well, though after protests they took it back. But I think all those who are sitting in this room, they should read at least Mahabharata. And Mahabharata is what is the game of deceit. We talk about Machia Valley, who was just 500 years ago. And look at the Chanakya. Machia Valley was nothing in front of Chanakya. And look at those who are sitting in Delhi. The road where is their diplomatic enclave, the road's name is Chanak Kotalya Marg, as Chanakya had two, three names Kotalya, Vishnu Kumar, Gupta. The road which leads to their enclave, diplomatic enclave, is Kotalya Marg and where they are sitting is Chanakya Puri and this I am not saying Barbara Cross it as New York Times was mentioned she was bureau chief she was a professor of journalism in Punjab University Chandigarh was in Kashmir and after retirement she has written a book India in the 21st century and she is the one who noticed it that this is Kotalya Marag and Chanakya Puri and what did Chanakya say when it comes to controlling others or destroying what they call enemy Sam, Dham, Dand, Bhed these are the four things and Mahabharata is a testimony Lord Krishna is the one who is the charioteer of Arjun leading that how they are curbing every law of morality how they are curbing or destroying every law of war and Krishna is guiding Arjun and saying this is Dharm Yud and in the end how through that deceit they win the Mahabharata and Nehru though was not a practicing Hindu but look at one time when the Sikh leadership with whom Congress has made a promise not only verbally there are six incidents between 1930s to 1947 All India Congress Committee resolutions Gandhi's commitments Nehru's commitment that as the Nehru said in a very flowery English uh, way back in 1946 that I think brave Sikhs of Punjab 
are entitled to a province in the north where they may also be experience the glow of freedom look at how flowery words these are but when 47 after partition and the stupid sick leadership of that time didn't listen to what signals were coming from london didn't listen to what qaid e azam was suggesting they went with the hindu congress with the result that in the constituent assembly when they were drafting constitution there were two sikh representatives there sardar pupinder singh man and sardar hukam singh when they talked about the promises made to the sikhs they said no those in nehru's words coming directly from the mahabharata and the worthy son of chanakya was he quoted a share baat aisi kijiye har baat ke 100 pehlu ho baat aisi kijiye har baat ke 100 pehlu ho koi pehlu to rahe baat badalne ke liye so that is what is the policy we are dealing for 71 years when master tara singh went one to one with nehru he again said master ji tab baat aur thi ab baat aur hai circumstances have now changed this is flavri nehru who so who took so called accession of hari singh what happened to hari singh in the last days where was that accession document these are the questions always raised and one thing i like to mention as was mentioned here as well that gulab singh bought kashmir jammu and kashmir in 72 lakh rupees look at these two brothers tian singh and gulab singh from jammu very poor not even real rajputs the dogras of a very not rajputs never considered as they refused to give even daughter to tian singh son who was the prime minister of maharaja ranjit singh tian singh and how they conspired how they destroyed the sikh kingdom shah muhammad one of the very famous punjabi poets who wrote jang nama singha frangiyan that is first battle anglo sikh war of 1846 where he said shah muhammad ik sarkar bajon fauja jit ke ant nu hariyan ne or what happened in that defeat these dogras the utyan singh was taken care by the sikh army but gulab singh he ran to jammu sikh army went there got him arrested but he paid certain amount and again came back he was the one who conspired with the britishers and jammu and kashmir was given as a reward to gulab singh this 72 lakh rupees was just as they flouted the treaty of amritsar and they gave, they said as in 1809 britishers had signed treaty of amritsar and this 72 lakh thing was a reward for that treachery and that thing didn't end with gulab singh today we are in indian supreme court is going to take the case of babri masjid versus ram mandir and one remember yuvraj karan singh son of hari singh he is the founder of vishav hindu parishad he is the founder of shiv sena and vishav hindu parishad is the organization even before rss which started this campaign to destroy babri mosque before advani went on a rath yatra and created all that hated everything so we have the account to settle with this family as well and at the same time being myself from that for last 30 years here we are in the sikh diaspora trying to bring this voice of freedom to the corridors of power here opinion makers law makers decision makers now we can say proudly that today we have us congressional sikh caucus in which there are 50 plus bipartisan congressmen in whatever resolutions and assemblies and others are being passed we are trying to prove our clout but as it was said here and again the court of guru gobind singh the great 10th guru who gave five articles of faith his court is koi kisi ko raj na de hain jo le hain nij bal se le hain power is never offered on a tray on a platter circumstances are created in such a way 
that when the enemy or those who are controlling, they have to yield. So I want to say that we should not be disappointed. Things are changing. Geopolitics is changing. Afghanistan, brave Afghans, in the last, since 1979, they have defeated two powerful. Soviet Union became the graveyard in the mountains and fields of Afghanistan. And today, United States and NATO, they are looking for a face, how to run away from there. What happened in Kandahar a couple of days ago tells them that who is controlling there. So I think the way India was trying to get into Afghanistan as well, circle Pakistan or for them the minorities were like the sitting ducks. Those things are changing. Geopolitics is changing. And when the people come out in the streets, one thing is very clear. They can eliminate the whole people. And I'll conclude with the quote of one great Sikh philosopher of 20th century, Sardar Kapoor Singh. When November 84, Sikh genocide happened, uh, I, along with two, three elderly Sikhs, went to meet him at his native place in Jagrao. He was all in tears as he used to be ICS officer before 47, for 14 years. And he was dismissed from the service as on October 10th, 1947, when he was Deputy Commissioner of District Kangada, a circular was issued by Punjab government at that time. Sikhs are a criminal tribe and a menace to the law-abiding Hindus. And any information about whereabouts of these criminals, Deputy Commissioners have the rights to take measures to counter them. This was four months after August 15, when almost 40% of the Sikhs were as refugees, those as that was a very condemnable civil war, and we on both sides of Punjab, are, we must feel ashamed what we did to each other. Who was the player at the helm of the affairs is a different story. But within two, three months, six got this reward of being a criminal tribe, and in the Constituent Assembly as well, the six voice was not heard, and both those representatives, they stood up, in the parliament, in the constituent assembly, they said, this is the betrayal of the Sikhs. This is betrayal of the promises made to the Sikhs. We reject this constitution. So fact of the matter is, de facto, we may be captured in Indian map, but de juris, Sikhs have not signed the draft of Indian constitution. So we are not part of India. We are fighting it and will fight it to the end. And I'll close with Sir Kapoor Singh's quote. When we were sitting at his home, he was crying. And in the end, he said, which words I can never take away from my mind. He said, he said in chaste Punjabi, but I'll translate it in English. He said that if in history it comes, there was a nation, great brave nation of Sikhs, those who were deceived to come under them by the Hindu rulers, and eventually they started killing them. All Sikh men, women, kids got killed. The whole nation fought bravely and got eliminated on ground. That will be a pride that at least in history it will come, that our every child, our every woman, our every man fought for it. But what kind of situation we are living in, Kis zalalat de vich asi reh reh hai, is lai ta dhub ke mar jana chang hai. So I want to say that slavery, ghulami, state of mind hai. And we need to stand with our Kashmiri brothers and sisters, fight to the finish as it says. And we will one day, we will end this mischief of colonial map making, that unfinished business of that red cliff, and all those colonizers, those who are again a country of shopkeepers, are doing new deals with India. Thank you very much.